Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today, I'm going to cover how to color um, glass, how to create highlights on an object to make it look as if it is actual glass. We're gonna do this with two things. We're going to do it with this hourglass page here. And then I've also got um, this jars page from Johanna Bassford's uh, Small Victories book. So we're going to take a look at those and how to do that. So stick around and I'll be right back. All right, one of the first things I wanna to try to show you, and I'm so sorry about the um, reflection from my ring light above, but let's look at a picture of an hourglass. So here, again, it really helps me to study a picture if I want, especially if I wanna learn how to color highlights. Um, so here you could see how the highlights, so it looks like the light source is coming from this direction. And you maybe even have a window reflection over here. Um, that's getting extra fancy with your highlights. If you wanna do it, go for it. But you can see that really strong highlights are coming in on this side, especially this bottom section here. So you can see up here, we've got a strong highlight, but also pay attention to how dark it is right up against these strong highlights. Um, that just similar to if you watch my bubble video, like how to create the bubble effect, um, it's the same thing. Your strongest highlight is always going to be up against the darkest part of the glass. So here's a very strong highlight here. You can see there's um, like a strong shadow here with highlights coming into this little curve. Again, there's a dark shadowed area up here with a highlight. Um, and one other thing too that we're going to do before we, when we color this hourglass is we're going to white out, oops, we're going to white out the illustration lines and that also helps give it a glass look. So um, again, I can't uh, encourage you enough to go and find source pictures like this. Again, I just go out to Pinterest um, and they, they really help me figure out like to have a reference image to see where do I want to place highlights if I don't know, obviously, just from looking at the picture. Um, okay, so let's get started on the hourglass. Okay, today we're going to be coloring highlights on an hourglass from this really cool book, Beyond Mandalas by Angie Grace and Letty Blue. And if y'all haven't seen this book, so for people that don't love mandalas, you might like um, this book. It's got black and white pictures, or black versions and white pictures of the same, but they're like normal pictures where they've worked, look at that, like a mandala in a windmill, um, a mandala out over the ocean from the lighthouse, different things like that. So it's a super cute book. Um, so anyway, they're out on Amazon if you want to go check it out. No, I am not endorsed or paid by Angie or Letty. I just really enjoy their art. That's so super cute. Anyway, so here is a, here's an hourglass that I colored in this book. And again, there's a black and white version. So what we're going to do is color highlights on this page here. Um, so if you'll remember what we saw was strong highlights up here, right here, maybe some over here. So one of the things that I'm going to do for my highlights is I'm actually, I've picked out some purple and pink pencils. Let me see if I can move this over just a little bit. And yeah, sorry. Um, and that's because there's such a strong pink and gold uh, color palette here. Um, the, you have to remember that glass is going to reflect whatever's behind it or around it. So it wouldn't make sense to use like a light blue for glass here, since it's got this strong pink and gold background, the strong pink mandala shapes falling through the hourglass itself. So what I'm going to do is use pinks and purples to help shade in um, where we're going to put the shadows, and then we'll go back in with the highlights. So I'm going to be pretty light. I'm going to start out with my darkest pencil here, which, oh God, that's Dahlia Purple. You wouldn't know it, it's so worn out. Um, anyway, this is a really pretty purple. But I'm going to start out right along this line here. And I'm just gonna lay down 
some shadow. And especially as we get down towards this little bottleneck here, it's going to be a lot more shadowed maybe than the rest of the section. So we're putting down some shadow here. Also, oops, I'm sorry. My head keeps butting my little... <laughs> I'm having light stand issues today, guys. Sorry. Um, anyway, so there we go. So just, put, just gently putting in shadow here. We'll put some over here on this side. Really gentle, very light, very light touch. And if you hear me lisping, I'm so sorry. I got some Invisalign braces last week, and I'm still adjusting to speaking with them. Um, I don't have to wear them for very long. I did have braces in junior high. I guess they call it middle school now. Um, but as I've grown older, my teeth have started to space apart up at the top, so... We're getting that fixed. Um, okay, so now I'm going in with the, so I've got a light, medium, and dark pencil. So now the medium pencil will be Mulberry. Uh, I'm gonna go in with that. Just again, I'm just being so like feather light with that. And one of the things that people fear when it comes to coloring glass and highlights is coloring over like oh I spent all this time coloring all of this and now you're asking me to color over it yeah I am sorry I'm gonna ask you to color over it be brave have courage um here we go being just really light very light I sound like Bob Ross happy little cloud okay now I've got this is process red so we're going to go in with a little pink here, lay that down, and I used a lot of process red actually in the image, so it's not going to show up too well down here, but definitely up on the glass. We can grab some of that for sure. Again, just very, very light. Okay, so now I'm going to come back down here. Really darken this up a little bit more. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing down here as I knock my light stand again. You know what it is? I've got a hair clip. My light stand sits right above my head. I've got a hair clip that makes my head taller than it is. <laughs> so that's what keeps knocking this. Okay, so again, just putting in the shadows. And especially as we get down here. Oops, I'm getting into the gold. That's okay. It's going to be a lot darker down here. So don't be afraid to darken the bottom of your hourglass. You know, there are lots of beautiful hourglasses like in Hannah Carlson books. I think, I um, can't remember if Johanna has any hourglasses in her books, but they're so fun to color. And I love that this one had these fun mandala shapes. Y'all know mandalas are my first love. Um, but I thought this would be a really fun page to show you guys. So just remember the... Strongest highlight is always up against the darkest shadow of your glass. So now we're going to grab the next, um, oops, just knocked it again. This is the, what do we decide this was? Mulberry. Mulberry here. And just going, you know, feather light. And then I'll get some of the, um, Process red here. And I guess I could use a little gold too if I wanted to. Um, that would really trick this up. So just very, very light. Kind of come out just a little bit more. Try to follow the shape of the glass. I'm just using the side of the pencil to bring down some of that color. We can do that up here as well. Just real gentle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's these little imperfections that kind of make it look more like glass to me. Just follow the shape as much as you can. All right, so now I'm going to come in here in the little neck 
see if we can add more. Let me zoom in for you guys. I'm sorry that I haven't zoomed in yet. Okay. And maybe bring the light color down a little bit more. And it's this kind of streakiness that really gives it that glassy kind of effect too, because we know glass looks a little streaky. Okay, so now we put down our shadows. So next thing I'm going to do is take my white gel pen, and this is again the um, Pentel Hybrid Gel Grip DX. Let's make sure I've got this thing ready to go. Sometimes these look like they're ready to go and they're not really, you know, it takes a little bit to get the ink started. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is color, oh, after I knock my head on the stand again, I'm gonna start coloring in some highlights here. And I love these gel pens because they are super opaque. And one thing this is going to do, and I should have thought about this ahead of time, it's going to pick up a lot of that pink that we just laid down. That is the only color, and it's because those pinks are so pigmented with Prismacolors, and these gel pens will just pick those right up. I'm also going to start outlining. See these outlines? I'm going to um, take my gel pen and go over the outlines, and that will also help make it feel more like glass once you get rid of that black line art. I'm going a little fast, but you could be slower about it. Take your time a little bit more than I am. Okay, and we can add like a streak down here. Oops. You turn the book, come over here. Make sure y'all can still see this. It's easier for me to come down the curve than up the curve. Okay, so now we said we we're gonna have a highlight by this dark section here. So we'll add some more highlight there. And then maybe some down here on the glass. We can also have streaks in the middle of these colored pencil streaks that we colored. You can have a couple of streaks there too. All right, so I'm going to do the gel pen up here at the top for you real quick. Okay, so now what I'm going to do here, we're going to try to, oh my goodness, you know what, let me take my hair clip out. We're going to put down some highlights. And again, don't be afraid to go over what you've already colored. This really gives it that glass, that transparent look. You can have like little streaks. We can have streaks coming into like into here. Maybe streaks here. Okay. So now one thing I want to do is go back and add just a little darker edge right along this highlight here. 
and right along this highlight here, just darken that up a little bit more. And that actually gives the highlight a little bit of pop. Here we go. You can see how these highlights already turned pink. <laughs> That's fine. Um, one little trick too, if you decide you don't like where you placed your gel pen lines or your white Posca pen or acrylic pen lines, you can always take a very sharp, um, like what is it, a colored pencil, like a blender pencil, super sharp point, and you can take that point and fleck off the um, the ink. It just to wait till it dries, of course, but it'll fleck off pretty easily. Oops, that didn't sound right. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, you can try that. So uh, there you go. So now what I might do here, let me see if I can go over some of this white with my Posca pen to pick up, make it look, look less pink. And it might just do the same thing as before. And this is the 2.5 millimeter Posca. You can actually take your finger and streak it down too. If you want it to feel a little streakier. Let's come up here, let's see. Whoops, that's my streak did too much. But you get the idea. So really, it's there's no um, formula. It's all just kind of personal preference in how you do this. But there you go. So that's how you can color an hourglass to look like glass. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, let's take a look at a picture of this glass jar for reference. Um, like I always say, I like to go out to Pinterest and find pictures for reference to help me figure out where I need to color highlights and shadows. Um, so I apologize about the weird angle and like the lights from my lighting above. All right, so you can see this glass has like an aqua or blue cast to it. Um, some glass looks like that. Some glass is colored. Some glass is not. Um, so we're going to practice coloring non-colored glass today. But what I want you to do is see the highlights and the shadows. So there's a strong shadow against the outline, and that's where your brightest highlights are. And you can see how the highlights fall from the on the curvature of the glass. So you can pay attention to that. You can also see how you have shadow along the bottom, and then it's very light. And then even up here at the brim, it's dark, and then you have like highlights hitting here along these edges, uh, but you have dark shadows in the contrasted areas um, over here on like the lip of the jar. So what we're going to do today is we're going to use some blue pencils to color in um, a jar from, oops, Johanna's, um, Johanna Basford's Small Victories book. So what, we're, what I'm going to do, let me get my camera set up for that real quick, and I will be right back. Okay, here we have um, Johanna Basford. This is her Small Victories book, and so it's about in the middle, I guess the middle of the book. She's got this cute page with four jars on it. So you can see I've already colored two of them, and we're going to color this one together today. Um, one of the things that I want you to walk away with is, is the courage to not be afraid to color over a picture you've already colored and spent a lot of time. Even though these pictures are tiny, you can spend quite a bit of time coloring these guys. So I don't want you to feel afraid. I want you to be brave. We'll be brave together. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've grabbed three blue pencils. So we're going to use like a blue cast on the jar, sort of like what we looked at in our reference image before. I've got um, Blue Lake, Caribbean Sea, Powder Blue. You can use any combination of blue pencils. It really doesn't matter. I just randomly grabbed three out of my Prisma box. Um, 
but these are the three that I wanted to try using today. Now, one thing I want you to see, sometimes illustrators, let me zoom in here, they give us clues on highlight lines. I know Hannah Carlson does this a lot in her books, but you'll see here, this little line is going to be a highlight line. We can even do a highlight line up here if we wanted to. I can't tell if this is one of those jars that has like, a brass top and maybe this part is, I don't know. We're gonna color the whole thing like it's all glass. So what I'm going to do, um, remember the lightest highlight is by the darkest shadow. So we're going to start by coloring and let me scoot my light over so I could adjust my book a little bit. Um, we're going to start by coloring with the darkest blue right along this highlight line. I'm just going to take that. Just you're sort of you're sort of just covering it, right? Okay. And again, don't be afraid. And if you mess up, you really didn't mess up. You just think you did. I want you to keep going. There's no messing up in coloring. It's called artistic license. Okay. So we've got this darkest blue laid down. Now I wanna make it just a little thicker, but I'm going inside the line here towards the page. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my medium blue, which is Caribbean Sea. We're gonna shade that guy in a little bit. And we're just going right over that dark area. And then we're just making it lighter as we go in this direction into the jar. Let me get that page to lay a little flatter there. Okay, and you have to talk to yourself as you do this. That is always so important. <laughs> All right, okay, see, now I'm coloring over this little light. By golly, there we go. Don't be afraid, you can do it. Now I'm going to take the lightest color, powder blue, and just come in here. Now see how I'm going at an angle at, so the jar, it almost looks like there's an invisible line right here, but it's coming in at an angle and then down. So I'm also coloring at that same angle and then bringing my pencil down. So you can follow that line. And you see how we're just fading that blue as we move towards the interior of the jar. And you could probably do this with one pencil and just vary your um, lightness and or how light or dark or how hard or light you press with the pencil into this. Okay, so I'm going to just add a little color here. Okay, now down at the bottom, it's usually pretty shadowed, so we're going to color. Oops, I hope you didn't just hear my stomach growl. That would be embarrassing. Uh, let's see, hang on. That's not the artist, artistic embellishment I wanted. Um, okay. We're going to color this guy down here. I'm having to sit at a weird angle to color for the camera, so I apologize. Thanks for bearing with me, always. So maybe we, it's a little darker down here. And see how I'm coloring the dark over that little house? little door I'm not worrying about it okay bring that up a little bit okay now what I'm going to do next is take this medium color bring it in a little further We don't want it to be such a harsh line over here. So I'm going to use the side of my pencil to sort of shade a little bit. 
and that might bring in a couple streaks. Okay. Now I'm going to turn this book this way and that makes it easier for me to get to like the top up here. So I'm thinking like these edges are going to be a little darker. You're gonna have darkness here because this is going to be a shadow. This lid is going to cast a little shadow right under the lip of that lid. And maybe a little darker here. Here's the medium color, bringing that in a little bit. And then some of this blue here. Okay. So now you can see we've added like, like I said, little streaks in here. Okay. Now, one thing I want to do is come back to this line, and I'm going to push the color out closer to that outline, but not quite all the way, because that will leave a little bit of a natural highlighted edge along the jar. Now, as we get to the bottom, we can close that and color it in. Let me see. Okay, just gonna bring that out. Oops, that's okay. It's okay if you go all the way to the edge. You're not gonna hurt anything. All right, so now we just have a little blue cast. So how does that look so far? All right, now we're gonna get out the trusty white gel pen. Again, you can use a Posca pen, whatever the white pen of your choice is. And I'm just going to go over this line art here on the outside of the jar. If you have to go over it a couple of times to get rid of the black line, um, go for it. All gel pens are not created equally, by the way. Okay, let's go in over here. Okay, turn my book. You can see how that already gives it a glassy effect by just getting rid of that line. Now it looks more transparent. That's really, I think, the magic trick to all of this. Just getting rid of the black line art. I'm just following it with your pen. Okay, whoops, I'm not going to be very good at these little loop de loops here. Okay, there we go. So now, what I'm going to do as I'm looking at this, I think I want to take the starker area out just a little bit more here. Add the medium. Okay, so now we're going to go over this line. Remember I told you that was the highlight line. I'll make sure that that's in camera for you. Remember that highlight sits right on that darkest area we colored. Okay, we got some little dots here. You can make it a jagged line. You can dash it. Doesn't really matter. I guess it's more the ground than the jar right there. Okay, so now one thing I'm going to do here is get out my big Posca pen. Okay, so now I want to get out my Posca pen. 
And we're going to add some big fat highlights. And these might be harder to see at first. We're just going to streak them down. Again, you're going to follow the, uh, you're going to follow the um, shape, sorry, of the glass. I'm just adding some little random highlights here. Now, one thing that you can do up here, you can see I added like three little hatch lines that way to also give it the, um, the impression of glass. So I want this to be super strong. And then maybe down here, we might have a highlight. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. One of the things that I wanna do is take my darkest pencil and shade right outside the other side of that highlight that I added. Again, that will make the highlight pop a little bit more and give it a little more definition. We'll do it by all of these. And then we have this highlight here, this guy over here. Okay, I think that looks a lot better. And we got it down here. So that's how you can always clean these up after the fact. If you're not, like if you put down your highlights and you're like, wait, I can't even see it. You can always take a pencil and layer in a little shadow right around that highlight. All right, so there you go. What do you think? I will be right back. Well, that's our tutorial for today on how to color glass. I hope you enjoyed it and that it helped you learn a little something um, about how to add these fun highlights. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps my little channel get seen by other people. Um, also, feel free to share with your friends. And the next video in our highlight series I'm going to do will be on coloring hair. So um, check back in a few weeks for that one. And I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.